My name is uh, Rajiv Jose. I'm a hand surgeon working in Birmingham. And um, I would like to talk to you about dermofasciectomy, which is an operative procedure for Dupuytren's disease. Surgery for Dupuytren's disease carries a risk of recurrence depending on several factors. One of the main factors is Dupuytren's diathesis, which is a combination of risks including family history, distribution of the disease and presence of ectopic disease. Some of these patients will have recurrence after a limited fasciectomy and may need another procedure to address the contracture. My procedure of choice in these patients is dermofasciectomy, which is an operation to excise the skin which is involved in Dupuytren's disease and replace it with a full thickness skin graft. For the next few minutes, I would like to share some of my thoughts on assessing patients for this procedure and some technical tips as to how I do it. When you consider a patient for a dermofasciectomy, you should make an assessment of the previous operations and the scars in the palm and fingers, which will guide you as to where you would like to plan your skin excision and how much skin graft you may want to place over the defect. Also, make a note if there is any numbness in the fingers which indicates a previous digital nerve injury. If there is a digital nerve injury on one side, this may also imply that there could have been a digital artery injury as well. One therefore has to be careful while operating on the finger. If there is another injury to the artery on the opposite side, this may compromise the circulation of the finger. Some of the patients may have a joint contracture in addition to the contracture from the Dupuytren's disease and scar tissue. It is not always possible to make an accurate assessment of it in patients who have recurrent disease. If you are considering doing a PIP joint release, it is best not to do your skin excision early because once you do a joint release, you may expose the flexor tendons and make that part of the wound not graftable. One other consideration is about the attenuation of the central slip. If the patient has a contracture of the PIP joint of more than 90 degrees, they are likely to have an attenuation of the central slip. In the past, I have tried to correct it by using a splint, but find that they get a recurrence of the contracture very quickly as there will be an extensor lag and this will soon translate to a joint contracture. Over the past few years, I have adopted a technique of tightening the extensor tendon by making a V-shaped incision of the central slip and advancing it. This has provided a full straightening for many patients, but unfortunately, some of them have lost part of the flexion postoperatively. I discussed with patients as to whether they would prefer to have a straight finger with the risk of loss of flexion or would like to have a finger which flexes more at the expense of a residual contracture. I find that manual workers prefer to accept a residual contracture and would prefer to get full flexion back in the finger. In those patients, I do not use the extensor tendon tightening procedure. When it comes to operating on the finger for a recurrent Dupuytren's disease, it is extremely important to be meticulous and use magnification. The risks of a digital nerve injury in recurrent Dupuytren's disease is much higher than a primary disease. It is important to preserve the digital artery as much as the digital nerves. Do not do your skin excision early and make your incisions through the previous scars as though you are doing a limited fasciectomy. Once you have excised the cords, think whether you need to do a joint release and if you do, proceed with that. Decide whether you want to do an extensor tendon tightening. If you decide to do it, you have to make a longitudinal incision over the dorsum of the finger. One does worry about making multiple incisions on a finger which may have precarious vascularity and if you are in doubt, it is best to avoid the extensor tendon tightening procedure. Once you have straightened the finger, you can plan your skin excision. It is best to plan your skin graft over the proximal phalanx which is the traditional way of doing a dermofasciectomy. 
you can aim to replace the skin over the whole of the palmar aspect of the proximal phalanx from the PIP to the MCP joint and from midlateral to the midlateral. For any reason, if this is not possible, for example, you have exposed the flexor tendons, then it is fine to do the skin excision in the palm over the MCP joint area. It is important to make an accurate template of the defect and take the skin graft from an area of the forearm which does not bear hair. Make sure that the skin graft is secured accurately by suturing in the skin edge to skin edge, to edge and use a tie over dressing to keep the skin graft in place. These steps will ensure that the skin graft will take on the wound and if this is successful, will give the patient a much reduced risk of recurrence. Overall, dermofasciectomy is a useful procedure for patients with recurrence dupuytren's contracture and though technically challenging, can be a rewarding experience for patients and surgeons.